Hello everyone, welcome back after a long wait to Friends Green Porsche Prep Book. I apologise for the very, very long interval between episodes. We've just been too busy to film, um, which is a shame. But we're back with this episode. So, what are we doing? We've got behind me a 997 Generation 1 and essentially what we're going to do is show how a 997 Gen 1 is refreshed to near enough as good as new. So what is the story with this car? Well, an interesting one. This car has come over from Northern Ireland. Now we've had this quite a few times. Apparently, according to the couple of customers we've had from Northern Ireland, the Porsche specialists and Porsche main dealers are few and far between. And the ones that there are, they haven't been happy with. So this car was bought by the customer over in Northern Ireland. Apparently there's a real shortage of them over in Northern Ireland and they've now made it very very expensive to import them from England to Northern Ireland so um, they've become very expensive out there as well but he's bought this car he's brought it over to England and had a 4.1 litre engine conversion done by a engine rebuild specialist up north already it's also had the coolant pipes and tandem pump and other engine related bits and pieces that we would usually do done but now since the engine's been done he sent it down to us we're down further south if you're unfamiliar with us we're in Hertfordshire which is about 25 miles north of London and he's challenged us to do all the other bits and pieces that are needed to make the car as near as as new as possible so here we are in the workshop Let's have a look what we've got in store for this car. So first, with the suspension. Now, the suspension on the car wasn't actually in a state that we find a lot of 997 Gen 1s. But as we've said, he just wants it as new. So the owner and I discussed lots of different options. If you've watched the channel before, you'll know um, we do lots of different enhancements and improvements on the suspension with different coilovers and different shock absorbers, different springs, etc., etc. But the eagle-eyed of you will have noticed that these are Bilstein B4s, PASM truck absorbers, as comes on the car from factory and as is on the car at the moment. So he wants the car to be compliant to appease his other half. So there we go. We're going with factory Bilstein B4 PASM truck absorbers and factory Porsche OE springs onto the brakes. Again, the brakes weren't actually terrible. He wants it as new, so we're going for Seabro discs and we're going for the EBC red stuff pads that we offer as an upgrade on the website. Very, very popular, always fitting those. You'll see here, we've got a numeric gear shifter and cable set, which we haven't shown on the channel yet. We fit a lot of these. You've got adjustability on how short you'd like the gear change. So we'll show that being installed and show how that can be set up and changed to suit your requirements. And then lastly, over here in the big box, we have got a genuine Porsche PSE, sorry, retrofit kit. So he'll have the switchable function with the loud mode and the quiet mode. So we'll show that being fitted as well. We've also got a load of trivial little bits and pieces, just niggly items that need attending to. So we'll run it through and show all that stuff being done. Let's get it in the workshop. So, Ollie has been working on the car, but he doesn't want to talk to the camera because he feels out of practice, so I'm going to talk. <laughs> so, no. so, look, one of the jobs on the job sheet was to investigate. We had a steering rack boot that was very damp looking. 
So we didn't want to condemn the steering rack until we got the boots off and had a look. And as you can see, we do indeed have a steering rack leaking. Luckily, we stock the refurbished steering racks uh, for instances like this, because otherwise we'd have to get this car off the ramp on skates somehow. This was back in the early days, wasn't it? We, when we didn't stock a steering yeah, rack. Exactly. On skates, off, and then the, the steering rack would go off and we'd have to wait two weeks for it to come back and get it back on. Now we stock the part, we're going to whip this off, put a new one on, and you're already in the middle of putting the suspension all together, aren't you? So. Yeah. Okay, so here's all the old bits from the front end now off of the car and replaced. We have a look through. The brakes weren't actually in too bad a condition, but as we've said, he just wants it all to be as new. They're not too badly grooved or pitted. We've got some ever so slight grooves on those discs. The front shock absorber bodies are corroded as they usually are on a 997 Gen 1 if not replaced already. And the top of what we call the stanchions is starting to corrode. I imagine that was the near side. The near side usually gets corroded first because it goes through all the puddles in the road, etc. Offside, not as bad. Bump stops starting to perish, but they were okay. Coil springs usually corrode at the bases, which is the case here. Top mounts, the bodies are very corroded. Maybe the originals from factory. And if it'll focus, you can see the bush just starting to delaminate away from that metal insert there. So eventually that will start to delaminate to the point that it will start to squeak. Drop links weren't too bad. We actually had one lower control arm that have been replaced. We can see the CTE markings there. They were actually in an okay condition. And then as you just saw on that slow-mo clip, there's the track rods and inner track arms. And there's all the oil coming out of the boot from the steering rack. Lastly, that is the little rod that attaches between the lower control arm and the sensor for the headlight self leveling and they always seize up on the ball joints as this one is completely seized. So that's been replaced as well. Right, so this is day number two on the car and we'd like to have gotten on with the rear end of the car in the same way the front end was done yesterday. So suspension and, and brakes essentially, but uh, we had some wrong components come, which we're waiting on. So that'll be tomorrow. So instead... We're gonna start fitting the exhaust. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got the Porsche retrofit exhaust to fit on this full genuine kit. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna get these new back boxes on with the switchable valves on them. Once we've got them fitted up, I'm gonna start getting them plumbed in to the vacuum lines. And once that's all plumbed in, then we can sort out getting the electrical connection sorted, wiring it up to the ECU and wiring it up to the new switch. So it'll work off a genuine button as well. What was the condition of the old exhaust? They're all cracked, the usual cracked around the welds. 
And also, if you come under here, I don't think this side's too bad, but they're, they're cracking on the wells. Yeah, we're quite badly cracking here, aren't we? Just corrosion around the exit and inlet pipes. Got newish clamps on there, isn't it, though? Yeah, it's got new fixings. That'll make your life a bit easier. Yeah, definitely. So usually these sleeve clamps here and here are very badly corroded and need heating, grinding, yeah. cutting, and the same on these triangular flange. I'll have to do it with these hanger fixings. As you can see, these hanger fixings are awful, so we're gonna have to definitely be cutting them off. I mean, what's happened here with all these new fixings is this engine's just been rebuilt, hasn't it, as we said, so yeah. they've obviously literally yeah, just fitted that back up. Right, so we've got the um, old exhaust back boxes off now. Got lined up against the new Porsche sports exhaust here. As you can see, these new exhausts come with the vacuum units. And both of them here. We've got new exhaust tips with them. We've got new clamps that we're gonna put on. So this is the new vacuum system here. So we're gonna get that all plumbed up. And this is the new wiring that we've got to put in. It's got a new solenoid there to activate it. So this all gets wired up to the ECU and then that will also wire up to this new switch here. So that you have the control of the switchboard exhaust there. So we're gonna get these back boxes on first, get it plumbed up and get it wired up. So we've got the back boxes on here, as you can see. We've also got the vacuum lines plumbed up to where they should go. So we've got the new solenoid connected to its new bracket here. We've got both these vacuum lines running to the back boxes. And then we've got a feed coming off here, which is the supply for the vacuum. So now all we've got to do is get the actual um, solenoid all wired up. So we're going to do that now. We're going to run a run a wire set that goes through into the back of the car. There's this little entry point, a grommet of an entry point back there, which will wire straight into the ECU. And then from the ECU, we're going to go straight into the um, new switch unit we're putting in there. Right, so we're in the back of the car now. We've got the whole rear carpet stripped out. So we've got the ECU unbolted here. Here's all the plugs for the ECU. These are our two wires that we've wired in, which will go straight to the switch. And then on this plug, this is our signal wire, which goes to the solenoid. And that's our power wire that's going straight to the solenoid there. So I'll show you on the other end quickly. So we've now got our two wires going into the plug for the new switch make sure everything works and then we'll get everything tidied up tied back and uh, put back together so we've got everything tied back tidied up apart from the rear because i've got two rear shock absorbers so i do actually need the rear all uncovered um but the new button is installed go on then take it away and have a listen <laughs>
So now we're gonna move on to fitting the new gear cables and shifter. So this requires moving the removing the whole center console. And then we'll have to disconnect them from the gearbox and pull them through. So we've got the center console out of the car now, as you can see on the floor. We've also had to remove the handbrake mechanism. There's the, this is the uh, gear shifter mechanism, which we'll be swapping over with this numeric short shifter kit. But we'll do that after we put the new cables in. So these are the new cables we're gonna be putting in. In order to take the cables out, we've just had to remove these top clips here. So we'll be pulling them through from underneath, just through this passageway here. There's a grommet in there at the moment, but we'll, that'll come out with the actual cables themselves. So we're gonna get the car in the air and just see if we can get them pulled through, get them out on the floor. So we've got the new cables bolted up to their mounts up here. So these type there actually, rather than clipping, you actually tighten this nut up onto the clamp here, which is quite nice because they're quite known to fall out, the original ones. But I haven't got it connected up properly to the gearbox yet. It's, I just want to get the top side in first so we can adjust the cables. I had to slightly modify this this uh, original grommet, which came off the original cables, as these cables are a little bit bigger. So it wasn't there wasn't basically a big enough hole there for these cables to sit in. So I wouldn't have been able to push that grommet through, so to slightly adjust that. But now that's in there, all secure. I'm gonna get the top end built up and then get these cables adjusted. So we've got all the new cables in there now with the new shifter itself. These cables do have quite a bit of adjustment on them. As you can see down here. But yeah, it's all connected up. Got the old grommet back in. So we're gonna get the center console back in and uh, get it all rebuilt. Right, so we're gonna be moving on to the rear suspension. We're also gonna be place, replacing these rear brakes for the performance package brakes. So we've got Seabro disc going on here, EBC red pads, and then we're pretty much, yeah, we're doing every single arm on here. So we're doing the two upper arms. We're gonna be doing the track arm, the lower arm, the trailing arm. And then we've also got two rear shocks, springs, top mounts, bump stops and two rear drop links going on here. wants the car to feel like new like we keep repeating but they won't see a bad tiny bit of corrosion on the bottom mate. yeah that's quite... they always seem to rub and chafe on the bottom don't they and yeah it just rubs through the paint and starts to corrode what are your arms like arms are the usual delaminated yeah look just starting to come away from the body and perish that ball joint that's quite floppy yeah Weird thing on this side of the camera. <laughs>
Hi everybody, we've got an update on the car. It's finished. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna run through the stuff that you already know about. Um, I'm going out for a drive, tell you how it feels the best I can. And I'm gonna quickly run you through the other kind of niggly trivial bits and pieces that we did to the car. Okay, right, let's recap the story with this car. So it's come over from Northern Ireland. I'm not allowed to show you the plates. So I've got the Friends Green Porsche one on there, but it's come over from Northern Ireland. Um, the reason being, in the customer's opinion, not mine, I don't know, I'm not familiar with um, the specialists and the main dealer in Ireland, there's no one over there that's decent to work on these cars. So he's brought it over here, it's gone up north in England for an engine rebuild to an engine rebuild specialist. It's now 4.1 litre capacity, and we'll talk about what it feels like briefly when I go out in the car in a sec. And he's then tasked us with the job of making it feel like new the car that is so you've seen we did our full suspension overhaul we're doing so many of those now probably a couple a week on 996s 997s we then did brake discs and pads all around for upgraded better units that we call our performance package so it stops really well we'll discuss that when i go out in the car um, we then did the porsche switchable exhaust so that's the genuine porsche retrofit kit so you've got the switchable button in the cabin i'll show you the noise that, that makes in a sec that's a really nice option to have we're doing lots of those now as well and then i've got a whole list here of trivial bits and pieces that we've done as well so our usual procedure how we work with most customers is they'll bring us a car they'll say do your thorough comprehensive inspection and report i want to know everything about the car warts and all so we do our inspection they get a compiled itemized report showing everything it's from minute little trivial things to anything mechanical and major on them um, and then he just said, do the lot. So what have we got? I've got the invoice here. I won't share the grand total just in case his wife is watching. So suspension, brakes, exhaust, here we go. We had some investigation works. The first investigation works was on the inspection. There was a loud rattle heard from the headlining when you're driving along at kind of motorway speeds or just below. Um, so Ollie and I got in the car, went along together, someone in the back, someone driving, and the person in the back held the headlining until we could find where we had to push to keep it still and stop it making a noise. We found that, got it back into the workshop. When we got back into the workshop, Ollie managed to get the headlining down, rattle things around until he could reproduce the noise and find something loose. And it sounded like the same noise we heard out on the road and then apply some kind of sound deadening pads to where it was making contact. And that's now sorted. So no more rattle. We then had the customer was complaining of the PCCM Plus microphone. So when you're speaking in the car, the person on the other end of the phone couldn't hear you clearly. In the workshop, we tested it absolutely fine. But when you got up onto the road, particularly at motorway speeds, you can't hear a thing. So we investigated that and we found that the microphone that was installed to the steering column for the PCCM Plus was slightly different in design to the Porsche ones that come with the Porsche kits that we fit all the time. Again, fitting no end of those. Um, so we ordered a genuine Porsche one and we fitted that and hey presto, 70 miles per hour, you can be heard clear as day in the car. We think what may have happened there is the customer informs us that there was a aftermarket stereo fitted previously with a microphone already fitted to the steering column where the PCCM Plus microphone goes. And what we suspect might have happened is that PCCM Plus was actually fitted by the Porsche main dealer, I think in Ireland, I'm not sure, so we think they fitted the PCCM Plus and just plugged in the cable from the old microphone into the PCCM and then not bothered fitting the Porsche one to save them to run a new cable around and sticking a new microphone on. I'm just, that's hypothetical, but it seems logical for what could have happened. So anyway, that's sorted. The sunroof wasn't operating quite right. When you first unlock the car, you 997 owners, 996 owners are probably may have experienced this, it's quite common. You get in, you click the back button, nothing happens. You hold the forwards button, it tilts, then you hold the forward button again, it comes back down, and you click the back button and it will work fine. And from then on, it will work fine. But the first time you unlock the car and get in, it will do that same messing up every time. That's usually, well, one of three things. One, it's just going to be AWOL and you can do a customer handover to the car on PWIS and it's fine. Two, the switch can play up. Or three, the most expensive option is the sunroof motor. There's micro switches in there and they play up. Unfortunately, it was the latter, so it's a new sunroof motor about 45 minutes an hour's labor stripping that out and changing that and 394 pounds plus VAT for the motor next thing sorry if i'm boring you passenger window had uh 
air noise coming in through it and it wasn't dropping all the way to the bottom. When they don't drop to the bottom and they stay up, the glass stays up by about three or four inches. It's because somebody's fitted a, a window regulator at some point because it's failed. And there's two positions. There's one which is the boxer position, which has a, has a um, shorter glass. And so they fitted it to that position and not adjusted it on the cable so it drops all the way. So let's take the re window regulator out and change it to the 911 position. The uh, wind noise coming through, when they've done that, they've obviously let off the glass off the regulator and then they've not positioned the glass back in the right place. So it's not making a seal around the window seal in the contactless glass, um, pillarless glass, sorry. I've got someone turning up, distracting me. You're right, mate. Who are you from, sorry? Uh, ben Edfors. Okay, I was just taking a video, distracting me, sorry. <laughs> it's seven o'clock at night. Okay, I'm going to quickly fly through these last bits now before you've all turned off the video. So next, if the camera will focus. Come on. Miscellaneous job. So we had a broken fuel flap hinge. So the fuel flap, when you put it up, was just pinging straight back down. So then you fuel flap put on. We had the little spread rivet that holds the retaining string on the fuel cap was missing. So we put a new one of those on so that the fuel cap's now retained. Uh, we're putting a pair of number plates on with Friends Green Porsche on because the holes have been drilled incorrectly and they were wonky. We're putting a new stone guard on one side. We've got noted here one appears new, which appears that one, although it's dirty. So the other side is going to be renewed by Brad in the morning when he cleans the car ready for the customer. We've got new bonnet struts because they were getting weak, so the bonnet was falling on your head when you had it open likewise no the rear was okay uh, the engine compartment light bulb was broken uh, or inoperative so it had a new bulb there the offside rear so these little triangular mud flap things here on the 997s are prone to coming away because there's a metal bracket behind there and what happens is the mud gets behind there sits behind the mud guard and behind the arch liner and corrodes that bracket and the bracket doesn't hold it tight to the body so that was kind of flapping away and it's quite common on the 997 have a look at yours if you've got one so it's had a new one of those they're not actually that expensive that was 46 pounds plus vat um on the front trailing arms to the suspension there's an air duct on both sides that channels air to the brake to cool them one of those was broken and held together with cable ties it's had a new one of those that was a massive 3211 that's quite expensive for that bit of plastic actually but there you go um and we've cleaned protected one of the brake pipes which had a little bit of surface corrosion which was a near side front caliper pipe so that's protected for the foreseeable we fitted the numeric gear cables to this so we're going to talk about that when we go out in the car and the numeric gear shifter we fitted four new michelin pilot sport 4s tires we fitted a new wheel bolt set so that they look clean and tidy and we had to fit one of our um, refurbished steering racks because you saw that all leaking out the steering gaiters at the front and then it went for a four wheel alignment and here we are so let's go for a drive right guys here we are out in completely refreshed and as near as as new 997 generation one as you can get so i'm not going to go on and on too long because i think this video is getting too long already but i'm just going to comment on the main bits that we've done so firstly the suspension now the customer tasked us with making it as new we've done a lot of videos on olin road and track coilovers kwv3 coilovers my favorite MO30, uh, the Porsche sport suspension, full suspension overhauls. This one's just had a like for like, as it came out of the factory, refresh. And that's exactly what it feels like. It just feels like a new 2005 911. So it feels completely sharp, completely confident in stilling, and just something that's a real pleasure to drive a lot of 997s now are starting to feel tired the bushes are worn and soft or or hard and brittle and perishing and you've got dampers that are soft or leaking anti-roll bar bushes all the bushes on the car are just getting soft and the cars just feel a little bit tired and a little bit loose and that's 
why we're doing so many of these comprehensive suspension overhauls and the customers are always um, just very, very impressed and yeah, impressed with the car in general. So yeah, that's how the car feels. Obviously we've still got PASM suspension, I can click that. I'm going down the Western Country Roads at the moment so I wouldn't usually put the PASM suspension on. Look straight away, you can feel these drain covers and, and whatnot. But on a nice sweeping A road, that'd be nice to have the PASM suspension on. So we've retained that because it's like for like. The brakes, well, they're not bedded in yet. We've probably done about 30 or 40 miles in the car, just test driving it after doing all that work to check for snags as we like to do after doing such a comprehensive job. So I can't really demonstrate how much better they're going to feel. And I don't want to put too much force into them yet because we want to bed them in fairly gently. But we've gone for the Zebro discs, which is as per the factory discs, and then we've gone for EBC red stuff pads. Now the red stuff are for road use. So we've got no squealing, didn't want any squealing on the brakes like you get from some kind of road and track brakes like you do the EBC yellow stuff ones but they're still very bitey is the word I'd use they're a lot more bitey than factory ones we've gone for those so the car stops really well Porsche sports exhaust let's click that you couldn't hear it coming straight away then because on the 996 and 997s between 25 and 45 due to EU regulations of the time it will be stuck in quiet mode even if you click it in loud mode. So if you put your car in loud mode and set off from naught, in fact I'll do it. You put it in loud mode, you set off from naught, I've got a nice noisy exhaust. So I've set off, off from my housing estate and I'm nice and noisy. I've woken up all the neighbours at 5am. But then I hit 25 miles per hour as I get into the 30 zone and it goes quiet. And I get out of the 30 zone and I get to 45. There you go. I don't know if you heard it. It gets loud again. And that's just how they came out the factory because of EU regulations at the time. In my opinion, it would have been better to have it in quiet mode from 0 to 25 and then loud from then on onwards. So when you get up in the morning at 5am, you don't wake up all your neighbours. Anyway, it sounds glorious. Porsche Sports Exhaust always does sound glorious. We've got a fixed price on the website for that now. I think from memory, you'll have to double check. I think it's 2000 599 for the full kit supplied and fitted but you'll have to double check it might have been updated on the website when you're watching this of course if you've not watched it when it's first come out now lastly the customers the customer sorry supplied us with numeric gear cables and a numeric gear shifter where you can adjust how short you have the throw now I don't know if he was ill-informed or just wanted these for some reason, but it doesn't really go, in my opinion, with what he was going with for the car. So obviously we've gone for like-for-like -like suspension, we've gone for non-track brakes so they don't squeal and they don't need warming up before they become effective, but we've got a real kind of racy gear shifter and set of gear cables and you get a bit of noise coming through, so you get resonate. The cables are what cause the noise because they haven't got the dampening kind of rubbers around the cables stopping that resonation from the gearbox, that mechanical resonation into the cabin. So it almost sounds like we've spoken about before on the channel when you get a pinion bearing start to wear and you get that whine that goes up in frequency and pitch with the rev of the engine. You've almost got that coming through. Now in a track focused car, where you've got squeal from the brakes and you've potentially got chatter from the flywheel being a single mass flywheel and all that sort of stuff, fine. But in a car for road and not compromised, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to go. There's no doubt the gear shifter does give a nice rifle-like shift. It's a very well engineered piece of billet aluminium, that shifter, as you would have seen from the video earlier on. Now, adjustability on the throw we always set them on the shortest and the reason being I'll put a clip in now from my phone if you set it at a longer throw it makes the gear knob so high that it just looks a bit awkward so you have it down low to get rid of that leverage on the shifter and keep the um, sorry it gets rid of the leverage on the shifter therefore making it very short but it makes the gear knob look right so it's still higher than the factory one but it makes it very short and if you're not careful you feel like you're changing gear quicker than the gearbox can manage so you're almost waiting for the gearbox 
slightly when it's on its shortest setting like that. Anyway, that's me kind of rambling on. There are my thoughts. I'm up to six and a half minutes already. So yeah, there we go. I think I'm gonna wrap the video up here. The customer's coming over. He's flying over from Ireland tomorrow morning. Brad's got to give the car a real good thorough clean so it looks as good as it drives when he picks it up from us. He's got that stone guard to put on still on one side. Uh, and it will be ready to go. So thanks very much for watching. If you need any work like we've done to this one, done to your car, please get in touch. Um, the website's www.friendsgreenforce.com. The email address and telephone number on there as well. Please follow our Instagram. We're doing more Instagram stuff. So we're doing stories and we're doing reels of short jobs we're doing in the workshop and stuff. So that's just at Friends Green Porsche. Okay, thanks very much for watching and we will see you in the next one.